Hello everyone, it's Trey with The Mayhem Calling, and I am here today with a uh, very special guest. The, uh, apparently the plight of all communism, the purveyor of all that is wrong in the world, and a very, very good YouTuber. Why don't you introduce yourself even though you don't need any introduction? Uh, hi, I'm uh, Thought Slime from YouTube.com uh, slash Thought Slime is the channel that I belong to and where you can find my ramblings. Yes, as we can see, we have uh, Bobby Duke's friend, employee. Well, what, what's the relationship now between you two? Work friend. Work friend? Mm -hmm. Yeah. On a professional level, but you'll still have water cooler chat. Yeah, I mean, he, you know, he obviously doesn't want me in his social circles, and I respect that. But, uh, you know, it's cordial in the office. Yes, definitely. Definitely. So, uh, how's everything been this uh, holiday season? You got anything going on? Nothing? You know how it is. You know yeah. how it can be sometimes. Yeah. I, I, uh, I work retail, so this time of year is especially challenging. Yeah, it wasn't my favorite time working retail. I can tell you that. Yeah. No, uh, anyways, now that we're done with the whole complaint about work, which I know we all love to do. Mm -hmm. I've been, uh, I've been seeing that you've been doing your, uh, it's a comic, right? The weekend weekends? Yes. Yes, that's what I thought. That's I, I knew that, but for some reason I doubted myself for a second there. So <laughs> to, to clarify, uh, I am drawing a comic on the weekend streams. Yes. Yes. But the weekends themselves are a celebration of vulnerability and doing things that you are afraid to do, in which we encourage viewers to share uh, examples of times in their in the past week that they have done something that uh, they were afraid to do or something that they thought would be challenging, but they've uh, summoned the courage to do anyway. It's important to do that. Like I uh, recently, I quit my second job, which really hard because I have anxiety about confrontation. Mm -hmm. But I just I was what the hell does do that mean? You have anxiety about confrontation. <laughs> I know, being a leftist YouTuber, and I have anxiety with confrontation. I have I have anxiety when like confronting people face to face. Hmm. Yeah, I don't I don't like to I don't like to do the whole I'm leaving or I'm quitting or you're a bad boss kind of deal, but why not? It's the best. It's it is the best, the best part of having a job. It was like it was so relieving, but I never had to do it before. And mm. then I'm just I'm like, yeah, I'm quitting. And they were trying to find every reason to every, finding every reason to keep me, but the main job I have, I get paid twice as much to do half the amount of work I was doing at that job. So I'm like, no. You, you can't have me anymore. Yeah, that sounds like the better job. Yeah. I am HO. <laughs> yeah, so I know you've done uh, the videos about your past jobs and how mm -hmm. doing YouTube is relatively just as busy, but somewhat more rewarding for you. Oh, much busier in terms of like hours. Um, but it's like, I'm in control of it and I don't have to worry about like a thousand people jumping up my entire ass uh, every second of every day. Because that's, that's the worst part of working retail is that you're given work to do and then everyone in the world is actively trying to prevent you from doing it. And if you don't do it, you're gonna get in trouble, but you also can't tell people to leave you alone because you'll get in trouble for that. So it's just a constant low level anxiety at all times. Yeah, it's uh, it's ridiculous. And like, fortunately, I'm a barista, so my main job is to make coffee. So mm. <laughs> that makes my life a million times easier. But even then, like, sometimes you just can't make coffee. Sometimes you have a million people asking you, "Hey, can you make me a coffee and a sandwich and a pastry and this and that and that?" And it's like you have a line building up, and you're like, "Oh, um, yeah, no, I gotta just." I gotta just uh, do some dishes really quick. <laughs> there's, there's also like the way that these uh, like big companies will make their employees the buffer 
between customers and the business's failings. So mm -hmm. if you were at a at a if you were a barista at say Starbucks, then uh, anytime someone got mad at something Starbucks did, the only point of contact they have with the Starbucks corporation is the barista in front of them. So that's the person they can yell at and thus will yell at. Oh yeah, apparently I'm responsible for, you know, supply shortages. I've been responsible for price increases. I've been responsible for making the coffee correctly. And yeah. that's a bad thing for some reason. <laughs> and there's it, so many so many times where like so much behavior is fostered in these environments uh that that should be by all rights responded to with a just fuck off. Yeah. No, you know? I mean so many people are not getting told to fuck off that need to be. And I think that is a critical problem today. Don't care if I'm allowed to swear. I'm going to. It's your job to bleep it if I'm not allowed to swear. I assume anywhere I go, uh, the type of audience that I, I tend to cultivate are going to be pro-swearing. No gods, no masters. I'm going to say what I want. Well, there's gods here, but there are no masters. And you can swear all you want. I do not have a children-friendly show anyways. <laughs> um, but yeah, so... I just, I think it's interesting because a big part of like the whole anti-work movement that's been going on, which I'm very much pro anti-work, despite the fact that, Whoa. you know, yeah, there's a, there's a mind bender, right? <laughs> but, um, despite the fact that like, you know, having a job, running a YouTube channel, I also do music and I'm starting a hot food program with completely you know, seem ironic in the fact that I don't like to work, but, you know. Well, uh, this, this is the thing, right? The, 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 you've touched on, I think, the difference between work and labor, because most people, if they weren't exhausted from doing their jobs all day, <laughs> would <clears throat> have things they want to do, many, many of which would be very useful to others, right? But people always say like, oh, like if I didn't have a job, I would just sit around and play video games all day. Like what would motivate me if I didn't need a job to survive? What would motivate me to go out and do anything? And it's like, well, have you ever been in a situation where you're just sitting around playing video games all day? Cause it fucking sucks. Like it's not a good feeling. That's, no. that's what depression is. Like you're describing the act of being depressed. And so if you just didn't have that like crushing weight on you, you know, maybe you'd go out and do a little gardening or, or whatever. Well, and it's like, it's, it's great because like, I thought when I was going to, when I was unemployed for a very short period of time that, oh, I just, I'll play video games all day. I might go out and do a little yard work every now and no, I did that for like one day. And the next day I was out looking for another job because <laughs> it's not, it's not fun. And you don't, and people think like, oh, they'll just take advantage of us if we let some people not work like very yeah, maybe. few people maybe but like we're getting taken advantage of by the people making us work so exactly and at least you know if the people who take advantage of us are like people who are disabled or they don't have you know any income whatsoever they're getting fed people are taking advantage of us now they buy their third or fourth mansion they buy their yeah. 22nd yacht you know Tomato, potato. If I'm helping some guy play like God of War Ragnarok all day, that is much more palatable to me than helping Elon Musk like kill some more monkeys, you know? Did you see that article from the hard drive? Uh, Elon Musk has a switch up, accidentally kills his girlfriend and impregnates a monkey. <laughs> it's difficult to believe that Elon Musk would have a girlfriend, but I guess he does have a lot of money. That's all it takes sometimes. Uh, well, that and, you know, he's very, very uh, good at manipulating people for a little bit. Mm. Yes. Yeah, he, he a certain manipulate. type of person. Yeah. Yes. Very certain type of person. People with a monkey profile picks, ironically. They should be the ones running away. Apes, I will say. Apes. That's true. That's true. That's true. I, my, uh, my apologies to the... NFT bros who are just like dying to watch my interview with Thought Sign. <laughs> oh no, I'm I'm speaking on behalf of apes. I care not for bored apes. Oh, fair they enough. They can they can drop dead. I'm I just I've I I, uh, 
I, I, I feel a strong kinship with actual apes as an, as an ape myself. Yeah, that, that's fair. That is fair. I am very, uh, I am very apish in my own ways. Sometimes I think about the fact that humans are apes and it just fucks me up. And I just got to sit down for a while, you know? That's why I just stopped thinking. It helps. Uh, well, are you still sliming? Always. Good, 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 good. Every day is slime day in this household. Oh man, I hope I hope I get uh, Grumble Tums lots of engagement with this one. Here's hoping. Here's hoping he's not doing too good. Yeah, uh, have, have you sold those shirts yet to be Grumble Tums? Not enough. Not enough. Not enough. I I worry that the adorable folksy woodland critter Grumble Tum who feeds off of my anything which benefits me essentially. Uh, I, I pray that we sell enough T-shirts at thoughtslimeshop.com in order for him to see the new year, but. We'll see. You know. We'll see. Yeah, you know. And uh, I don't blame people. I know it's a it's a hard time of year, and I, I I'm certainly not saying that if they don't buy the t-shirts, there's blood on their hands. I would never say something like that. And I think the people out there that are thinking that maybe silently to themselves are being very judgmental, as numerous as they may be. Exactly. You know. But you know, I mean, you are right. It is a hard time of year, and you know, hard time we, of year. We just let you know if we just have to let poor grumble tum starve then that's that's the unfortunate reality of life yeah i know i i mean I, it's you know uh, and, and his whole family really depends on him uh, as this old breadwinner it's 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 a it's a tragic situation it is tragic but but you know we also understand we also understand all right now that we've efficiently guilt tripped people enough there are people that will message me and they're like, hey, you need to stop doing this because it's legitimately upsetting me that this cartoon is sick. And uh, I will accommodate people pretty far when it comes to like not upsetting people with my content. But I think there is a line where like that is not <laughs> like I'm not willing to get rid of a running joke like that because you can't separate the cartoon squirrel from reality like it's it's like it's a drawing i made like it's like you're if if that is legitimately causing you distress then there is a greater problem than this drawing i promise you you know like it, it's it's uh it, it is one of those funny things because like i do kind of feel bad sometimes but like i also know it's a drawing it's yeah, it's the no. joke, right? The joke yeah. is you're meant to like it. It gets you in the feels, and then you go, "Wait a minute, what the? This is a, you know." Yeah. No, I and but I I do know for a fact one thing that people can uh, take into consideration is that Grumble Tums does not eat pronouns, as you know we established in Lewis' stream a few. Is that a year ago now, or? If you're that. expecting me to remember things that I've said in my life, the, the, it's not, it's simply not going to happen. That is simply not how the ADHD mind works. Oh, no, absolutely not. As someone with ADHD, I don't remember what I had for breakfast this morning or if I even ate. So, but uh, I was trying to remember when Lewis Stream was. That was the first time we actually talked for like five minutes. But um, yeah, okay, so. Speaking of which, ADHD, uh, I want to mm -hmm. talk about a little bit about how content creation is for you as far as you basically coming to terms with ADHD. I remember that whole video that you did and I had people send stuff in. I was going to send something in, but uh, I felt like I looked stupid, so I didn't. Yeah, this is, uh, the, if, you had, if you said something like that to me on a weekend stream, I would absolutely go off. I would just lose my mind on you because... You, 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 you're never gonna no one ever looks stupid it's such a it's such a it's just a, a nonsense thing to worry about i've i'm always of the mindset that just post uh yeah. if you're when in doubt just post i follow the gary v methodology just post but uh um in terms of making content with adhd it is just a matter of like People will ask, how do I organize my time? Or how do I prevent burnout? Or how do I do these things? And there's only two ways 
to do something if you have ADHD. It, it really is this simple. Either it's novel, so it's something that you're, you can't stop doing, in which case you don't need my help, uh, or you create stakes, you create urgency. Those are the only two ways you can get anything done. It's the reason that every person with ADHD waits till the night before to write any paper they, they have due for school or to do any assignments or pay any bills. It's only when, it, when those things uh, become urgent that they suddenly all executive function returns and they can do them. It's because in lieu of, of dopamine, uh, the, the, the stress hormones will do in a pinch. Oh, absolutely. I've had, as you know, someone who was diagnosed at like eight years old with ADHD and having to deal with like teachers always asking, well, why don't you just turn in your paper early if it's so hard for you? It's like, that's not the point. <laughs> yeah. Why don't you just, you know, tap dance on the moon? Like what, you know, what, the, what are you talking about? Do my paper early. Yeah. It's, I mean, please contain your ideas to those within human capacity. Exactly. And it's just so much, it's so interesting that like so many people who have ADHD don't quite understand how much it actually affects their life. Because I get people like, well, I have ADHD and I can do this, 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 and this. It's like, great, good. I have ADHD and I can barely, you know, remember to put pants on when I leave for work in the morning. <laughs> It's also such a weird impulse to like hear someone complain about a problem in their life and go, well, I also have this disorder and I don't experience that. Like, okay, man, it's good, great. Yeah. I'm happy for you. Keep it up. But uh, it's also like, even if you can get everything done and some people can be like, you know, from the outside, perfectly seem perfectly put together and organized, but like, it's still harder to do things. And that, little bit of difficulty adds up over time, right? Even if you're Absolutely. getting everything done, it's still requiring more mental effort from you, which leads to issues with uh, emotional dysregulation and, and things like that. So like, even in the case where you are getting things done, I, I would say it's still like very debilitating in ways that I don't think people really realize. Absolutely. It's so interesting because I, uh, you know, it took me about 10 years to get to where I am at my job to where I'm making, like I said, enough money to where I can quit my other job. And I see people like, who are like, wow, you waited that long. Why did it take you so long? I'm like, because I don't, I don't just get motivated to do things. The only reason I got motivated to do this was because there was an opening. Mm. I knew the job already. I'm like, okay, let me just do it. Take that opportunity. And like, most of the time, I don't even get motivated to get out of bed. So the fact that I finally was able to muster up the motivation shows you that this isn't as simple for everyone. And there are legitimate people out there with ADHD who live a completely normal life. I would argue that most people with ADHD live a, a normal life because I think that the term normal is a very broad category. Well, yeah. I, I don't think it's abnormal to like have difficulty doing the dishes. Um, but it, it, it doesn't mean people aren't struggling. There's lots of different, you know, ways people struggle. Oh, absolutely. Like I, like for me, when I say normal in that capacity, like maybe they just don't see like the normal, the struggles that like, some of us do. Maybe they like can work an eight hour day, go home, do the dishes, do laundry, you know, play with their dogs or their cats or their mouse, whatever they have. Mm -hmm. And then they just go to sleep and wake up the next day and do it all again. And that's fine for them. Things are I mean, they, What you're describing is a space alien. Like I, I've never, yeah. <laughs> like, I can't imagine the idea of like, having a day, having a productive day and going to sleep and then getting up in the morning and feeling good and ready to start. Eat. Like, it's just, that's, that's never happened. That like that, what a, what a blessing that must be. Oh yeah. I unfortunately do not have that blessing myself. So it is a, it is interesting though, to see like people who describe that. And then they ask me, well, you don't take pills. How are you managing your ADHD? And when I tell them like, 
I'm not. Some days I can function properly. Some days I lay in bed and get out of bed exactly five minutes before I have to leave to work. Also, people with ADHD tend to develop very complicated coping mechanisms that like allow that because like just just because your mind requires stimulation doesn't mean you're just going to lie down on the train tracks and die you know you exactly you, you figure out how to how to get by in the world with little little tricks that you you do you know it's the like uh fidget spinners and all that shit like it's it's a you you figure out ways to keep yourself going is the answer i i think yeah that's exactly it like for me i'm a i used to be a tapper that annoyed people. So I started being what I call a scroller where I keep my finger moving on the phone, even if I'm not looking at it, just because that's the way that my body works. It wants to do something. Yeah. So, and it, it annoys the hell out of my wife. She thinks I'm like ignoring her. And it's like, no, I promise you, I'm not ignoring you. I swear you are my one and only. I just, I have to do something or else I'm going to a- start my wife who also has adhd uh it's it's very it can be very challenging because if she if she's going to listen to a story she needs to be like moving around and doing other things but i can't speak if she's doing that because yeah. i get too distracted and i can't think straight so it's just like a really bad scenario it's it's almost like you got to like have your phones on not looking at each other while you talk just so you can finish your story and not get distracted yeah, it's one of those things where like sometimes I need a distraction in order to focus better. Like yes. I'm paying more attention by being distracted. Yes. And, and that's then... I think a thing people don't cuz cuz you know, th- there's a there's a tendency to think of uh, the the ADHD tendency towards distraction as a lack of willpower, but it's often like a conscious choice to because you need because your brain goes 10 times as fast as everyone else's. So you need like five things hitting it in order to just not feel like you're going in slow motion. And that's another thing too. It's like, I'm sure that you've experienced this creating content. I've been doing this channel for a little while. Now I took a long break. This is going to be my first video back, but I've been doing this channel for a little while. And like, I always have at least four or five projects I'm working on at the same time for the channel. And then- not me. I'm always oh, not you? behind, always behind. Oh. Well, no, when I say I have four or five projects, I don't mean I'm actively working on four or five projects. I mean, they're all sitting there and one of them will finally cl- click with me and then that will be my video. Yeah, I, I'm like, I still have a Shea St. John video I'm working on. I have a Psychonauts video I'm working on. and Shea have... St. John, now there's a blast from the past. Oh gosh, yeah. I actually actually have a few guests I'm working on that one with. I have American Johnson and Luna on that one, a couple of other ones, but it's not going to be out for a little while. <laughs> it's supposed to be out in October and I just haven't even looked at the script since July. <laughs> yeah, so, um, sorry, I'm getting distracted. <laughs> but How anyway, apropos. Yes. Professional stream here, professional stream. Um, that's not even a stream. Wow. There we go. So, uh, oh, yes, the most important one I want to talk about was your streams of Sophie and sometimes Pinko, mm-hmm. uh, your cringe corners. So, those are not streams. No, we did once, uh, Pinko and I did a stream where we watched uh, Caleb Moppin's quote unquote apology video. That was hard to get through. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, I I don't think I've ever been like more visibly mad uh, on stream in my life. I was just like, yeah. But then it got to the part where he taped a piece of paper to a whiteboard uh, and I <laughs> left for a solid 15 minutes straight. Yeah, I am. Um... I, I just don't, anyways, not to, not to distract ourselves. We can talk about Kayla Moffin in a little bit, but. Oh, please. If you, yes, yes. But um, 
I, I just want to know like how that came about. Like your the way that you use cringe to instead of like going after the oppressed, like it has been used for years, like the mentally disabled mm-hmm. and the people who are just like maybe not disabled, but having vulnerable moments in their life. You use it to go after people in power who are oppressive, who are actually dangerous. Like how did that come about? Yes. Yeah. Not necessarily powerful people, but like yeah. people that are are doing something bad in the world. Uh, and it's just because that's what's actually embarrassing, you know. There's yes. so many like it, like I I love to revel in the muck. I like to roll around in the filth of the internet and and uh, you know uh, like like a the hog that I am. And uh, sometimes that means I got to get it out. I got to you know. And there there's something very compelling of of the format of each of us trying to disgust the other one more with the fucked up thing we found. Oh yeah. Because like, it is genuinely not acting. Like we are, we are spiritually, we're doing psychic damage to one another in every recording. Like you can, you can chart uh, in the, uh, like, like our energy, like going down at, over time, because it, it's just like, you know, we're doing it in a, in a particular way to, antagonize the other person and that is uh, a lot of fun yeah no it looks like it i love the i especially well when i say love i mean was absolutely mortified and terrified by the one you did about the queen of canada that one Mm. that one actually kind of fucked me up seeing someone that dangerous and then like i think about it i'm like yeah but we just we elected someone four years ago five years ago, that was equally as dangerous. Like, how can I sit here and be like, oh, wow, this one person is so scary when we elected someone equally as scary in the office? There is a, you know, and you you could make an argument that um, basically all <laughs> elected officials yeah. are, you know, <laughs> like, yeah, no, certainly, certainly I think uh, uh, Joe Biden or Justin Trudeau is going to be responsible for more human suffering than Ramona Didalo. Yeah, no, absolutely. The 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 difference in my mind is that like I have I can I don't know, by calling attention to someone like Ramona Didolo, it is shining a light on like a festering problem. Uh whereas like I don't know what I what like really shining a light on Justin Trudeau and his schemes, you know, I'm not gonna bring him down, I don't think. You never know. In a couple of years, it could be hot sign. Famous YouTuber brings down mm. the most powerful man in Canada. Well, I mean, you know, there's, there's, there, are, there are politicians I fear more than Trudeau. <laughs> Let me put oh, it Oh, absolutely. Way. Absolutely. I'm, I get scared to death seeing the people that we elected. I mean, we elected Kirsten Cinema, who was supposed to be like the progressive choice in Arizona, and it's just been hell for us ever since. Well, you're just saying that because you you hate to see a girl boss winning. Oh yeah, yeah. That's what this is? Anti girl boss activated. Yeah, no, it's um, like uh, it, it's a, it's it's hard, right? It's hard to find that balance of like. Because a lot of the people that we we choose, or to be more specific, a lot of the figures that I choose are are troubled in in some ways, yeah. but they also like do harmful things that I think is worth making fun of. And I think you can make fun of the harm someone does without making fun of, you know, their struggles and things like that. And so I'm always pretty. I I try to be careful with that stuff. Um, and you know nobody's really said anything so far so yeah no which is which is good you know <laughs> but um you know i feel it's interesting too because like there's so many um i don't know what the word i'm looking for right now is there's so many times where like i will see a cringe corner episode and it's someone like uh well someone like wim hof who just like they don't seem like they're doing anything bad but then you realize like it's underlying Intention. Yeah. Wim Hof is kind of an interesting case, especially because he was the first Cringe Corner released, not the first one recorded, uh, which we lost, unfortunately. 
but he is probably the least dangerous of the people we've featured so far. Um, but a lot of what he's saying is like, is like kind of like a, for lack of a better word, a gateway drug for a lot of the type of new agey anti-vax shit that, that gets people hooked into like weird QAnon mom Facebook groups. And like, th there's, there's this vacuous, um, positivity to a lot of it that's just like if you say well this doesn't seem like it could be true they'll accuse you of just you know being a hater or just or just uh nitpicking or or not not uh looking at all the miraculous things he's done or supposedly done um and that's where i think it runs into trouble because like if if he just wanted to be like a, a guy who likes uh dipping himself in ice sure man follow your bliss. But like the fact that he's telling people that it's going to cure various illnesses based on absolutely nothing, you know, that's, that's going to potentially stop people from seeking real treatment. And I think that's quite dangerous. Absolutely. It's one of those things where you just can't like, you can't ignore it, even if it feels like it's not that big of a deal, because I mean, for the longest time, you know, like healing crystals, that was like, I know it seemed popular and memey lately, but I haven't seen that forever. Yeah, it's one of those things, right, where you have to kind of be measured in your criticism because what's the harm in healing crystals? There isn't any per se. What the harm is, is that the belief in that might preclude someone from seeking a more helpful option. So like, if you want to buy a crystal, you know, who cares? But if you buy a crystal instead of going to the doctor, that's dangerous. And I think, yes, you know, so like I would never go on and say like anyone who buys a, a crystal is a sucker, you know, because I don't care, it, you know, it makes you feel better, whatever. But like there are these new age healers or healers that, that will take advantage of people in these situations to peddle their uh, hokum. Yeah, no, exactly. And I've seen, um, I've seen some dangerous ones. Like we have a couple people down here who believe in electromagnetic therapy, which doesn't sound like much, but then you realize they are literally telling you that magnets will cure cancer, will cure autism, will cure Alzheimer's. And that is horrifying. Yeah. It, they're the scum of the earth. And the worst part is I think a lot of them believe it, which I don't know if that makes me feel worse for them or angrier. Um, I mean, it's a kind of willful ignorance, isn't it? Right. Yeah. Cause you, you know, you really believe it. And also you happen to make money from believing it. So that's a little convenient. Don't you think like, no, it's, it's a, uh, it's, you, you can say, well, I've looked at all this evidence that confirms my, my biases, but you're also, like going out of your way to ignore all the evidence that doesn't. So whether or not you believe it, you know, I, I can't say what anyone believes in their heart of hearts. You, you kind of have to base it on their actions and, and how that affects people. Exactly. And I feel like a lot of that, like it's, it's hard because I want to say like, I want to give people the benefit of the doubt. But then I see so much like, just maybe you might have a better word for it. Like just the absolute, like, no, I don't believe you regardless of whether you're saying has evidence to support it, not will for well, ignorance necessarily, but like. There, there, there are certain things that I'm willing to give people the benefit of the doubt about. Right. But yeah. in terms of like ability to treat a serious illness, that is not something I extend the benefit of the doubt about. Like you have to prove to me that that, that works before I'm going to take it seriously, you know? Exactly. Like, I just, I need some evidence. Give me like peer reviewed studies that aren't full of grammatical errors. Mm. And it's like, you know, when we look at a lot of these, these people, it's not hard to find the counter evidence. It's not hard to see, you know, a simple Google search to, to find like how a lot of this, the sources they cite have been debunked. 
And so like they're going out of their way not to do it. Yeah, exactly. I've, uh, like there's this one, cause I was uh, trying to write ads for people for a little while. I was trying to get out of my current job and I was doing advertising. This one lady who had one wanted me to write ads for her. And I'm like, oh, you know, it's just like, they're just decorative magnets, right? They're not really, no, she's like, no, I want you to tell people that they actually work. I noped out of there so hard. I'm yeah, like, I'm not you, doing that. You can't, it's false advertising. It's against the law. <laughs> like, it's, you it's can't only, do that. It's not only false advertising, but it's just, even if it wasn't, even if like laws were saying, oh yeah, you, you can do whatever you want. It's immoral to me. Absolutely. And I know morals are relative, whatever. Commun I, communists I argue with me all the time. But. I, I think, look, we can we can get into the real weeds on the what you know what is what is morality? Is there a universal sense of morality? But uh, yeah, I think if you're if you're actively stealing money from people with uh, critical illnesses, uh, you, you're kind of a dick. I think that yeah. that is as close to a universal truth as we're going to find in this world. You know, I will I will one hundred percent agree with that, and it's not just you know not just big corporations doing it. Sometimes you see those little mom and pop shops who sell stuff like that and they'll tell you, oh yeah, it works. My cousin who I met once in my life had stage four cancer and they bought this salt lamp and now they're, now they're healed of all cancer. They're 10 years younger and they got rid of that wart on their left cheek. There's this uh, group of um, grifters that sell what is essentially cyanide to people. Yeah, uh, I forget what they call it. They call it vitamin something, but uh, it it is literally cyanide. Like, it, it <laughs> and, and they're selling it on the basis that it it has all these medical effects. And I'm like, you gotta you, like, I don't know. How do you sleep at night? Like, how do you live with yourself? You know, it's 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 wild to me. It yeah, it just doesn't make any sense. I feel. I guess for me, like I've seen enough of this just in the retail world, because like there's a big, you know, hocus pocus thing that a lot of you'll find in a lot of stores. Sure. It's called vitamins. Well, yes and no. It, it depends on where they're from and it depends on what they are, but like you'll see a lot of like multivitamin stuff that tell you all these things, and a lot of it is bogus. Yes, the supplement industry in the United States is just not regulated whatsoever. There's no one checking to make sure that the supplements people take actually even contain those things. So you could be just taking a pill full of sawdust for all you know. Yeah. And like, I know, I know there are some like legitimate vitamin supplements out there, things like that. And I, I, I know like, I can't just put like everyone into a box and say all this whole industry is bad but like i know where i work i see it all the time where we get these supplements that i know for a fact have no value and they may actually contain the vitamins they say they contain but that doesn't mean that they do the things they say they do mm. and that's where i get like that's where i get so mad it's like why do we support this It's the, the same reason that uh, the root of all evil, it's the profit yeah. incentive. It's, oh, yeah. Uh, it always comes back to that. It does. You know, I said before, you know, in the past and quite ignorantly, now that I look back at it, that capitalism itself is nothing. It's just this thing that people abuse. But then I'm looking more into it and I'm like, the more I've looked into it, the more I'm like, no. Ideology itself is a thing it's a tangible thing and people who mm. follow the ideology they follow it for a reason i would go farther than that i would say that it actually doesn't really matter what people's ideologies are the nature of capitalism is such that you are made to participate in it no matter what you believe and it can never be made ethical uh by design, it, it it's not yeah. simply that there there are a few bad actors, uh, which is certainly how a lot of capitalists would like to portray it, but it's more so that the 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 
act of having the private ownership of the means of production, the act of producing commodities for a profit will inevitably result in that kind of class tension where they're trying to squeeze as much labor and as much profit out of out of production as they possibly can. Uh, and the rest of us can just get fucked, essentially. Yeah, no, exactly. It's I get people all the time who say, well, if you don't like capitalism, don't participate. How? Even if I'm homeless, even if I have nothing to my name, I still have to participate in capitalism by dying. Yes, I call this the um, the libertarian uh, Minecraft argument because they yeah. literally view uh, uh, the real world as a game of Minecraft, where you can if you could tomorrow just start a new society by going outside and punching a tree and getting the block and then setting everything up yourself. You know, that, that's I've I've had the so many people will just say like start your own <laughs> start your own little commune and like well it's not quite that simple <laughs> like it's no like i can't just like walk off my neighborhood and say okay guys we're we're free we're communists now we can do whatever we want you know no you know you still i mean we still have electricity from the city we still have water from the city there's nothing yeah and the city would uh kill you if you tried to do it yeah uh is a big problem <laughs> And it's just like you you people don't understand it's not like you can of course go ahead and start communities that are like kind of co-op communities in a way you can start co-op stores sure. you can have this stuff but at the end of the day you still have to participate in capitalism at least a little bit yes the the thing the the fact of the matter is is that like simply because you can imagine some sort of hypothetical wherein people uh could you know, strictly speaking, there is a way that you could not do this doesn't mean that it's likely or it's uh, possible for most people in the real world. And the analogy I, I use for that often is like you could technically build your own 747. Like there's nothing stopping you from doing that, but it's so hard that no one is going to do it, you know? Yeah, exactly. You know, and if you do do it, you know, Good on you. You're the exception, not the rule. Yeah. Like I see people all the time who say, well, you know, this this place in the US started their own commune. They don't they don't pay taxes. They all share, you know, why don't you do that? It's like that place also is a singular entity that at any moment could get ravaged and raided by the FBI and no one could stop them. Yeah. I I don't know where it is. It's like a it's like a tent city that follows like all those principles, but they also have rules saying that the children are allowed because they don't take criminal records into offense or into a uh, into in the mind, but it's like sure, that city is fine right now, but what's going to happen if one day the city just says, you know, eh, no. You, you can't exist anymore and just bulldozes it all. There's yeah. no legal recourse for that. And it's like, again, you can do, you can do things to like kind of soften the blow, but it's just like putting a boxing glove on a hand. It only softens it so much. Yeah. Although like, this is one of my pet peeves is that people will use this to therefore not do anything <laughs> like to oh yeah to, because because there's no ethical consumption under capitalism therefore all consumption is equally bad so i can do whatever i want and i'm free from the responsibility of trying to make ethical choices because technically strictly speaking none of them are ethical so you know i might as well buy this uh minced homeless people and uh yeah. have that as as my dinner tonight you know like it, it, yeah, it's like you can you can mitigate harm, and like I think I think like with people, it's a sense of nihilism and doomerism where like they're like, oh, well, I can just do whatever I want because nothing's ethical. It's like, I mean, there are things that are more ethical. Yes, there are degrees <laughs> of of, ethic, of ethics here. Like, no, nothing's going to be one hundred percent cruelty free or you know, one hundred percent ethical. Like even doing like a unionized stuff, like your t-shirt, the t-shirts that you're making are from a unionized company, mm -hmm. but there's still like some form of like 
there's still some form of capitalism that's involved. There's still some form of, you know, exploitation that's involved in that. And it's never going to go away 100%. But you chose the most ethical route for your production. And I mean, they're probably a lot better off than people working in, you know, a third world country being exploited by Apple. Well, like even even when you go to the extreme lengths of that, like that I uh, and my uh, distributor went through. Uh, well, they went through. I didn't really do anything to be honest. But right. they, they like uh, where they they like go to the factory and they make sure that the conditions are good and they uh, uh, it's all like produced in the USA by unions and and okay, uh, but then when you ship it you're shipping it through like a, either the postal service, which is, you know, run by the government and it's the only government institution that is expected to make a profit or you're doing it through a private shipping company. And so like, you know, you're, you're, yeah. you're going about it that way. What about the, the, the people that make the boxes that you ship things in? What about, you know, the, the gasoline that goes in the cars? What it's like, there's, there's, it's all interconnected in that way. Exactly. Like, but again, you still went out of your way to make an ethical choice. You still went out of your way to be like, I'm going to yeah. take what I can and minimize my harm. There's, al there's also like a matter of like, what's reasonable, you know? Yeah. Like it, it like you, you need to have clothes. Yeah. So exactly. like, I, I mean, I don't begrudge anyone who goes and buys cheap fast, fast fashion, even though technically it's terrible for the environment because cheap clothes are still clothes. Yeah, I mean, I think that the people who should be judged for that are not the people buying it, but the people making it necessary for them to do so. Yeah, exactly. The, the fashion companies that jack up the prices of, of well-made clothes so that they can sell cheap disposable garbage that goes in landfills. I 100% agree. And I get the people all the time saying, well, why don't you just buy, you know, why don't you just do this? Why don't you make your own clothing company? It's like, if it were that easy, everyone would have done it. Yeah, but I can't, the, the thing is, I can do that for one thing, you know, tops. Yeah. You can't, you can't make your own everything company. Yeah, exactly. Just like, well. well so like the, the, the solution I would propose in order to do that would be uh, some sort of entire economy that does not exist on the profit motive yeah, exactly which is achievable only through retro revolution you know like it, it's it's kind of like one of these funny things where like they say well why don't you do this why don't you do this and like that would all be possible yeah. under that's when you go now you're getting it yeah. now you're getting it yeah why don't we do that <laughs> i just i like i love leading people to that part and they're like no, no wait wait i'm not gonna say the c word it's like but you're you're getting there, you're getting there. Yeah, it's it really is like the absurdity of the way things work now. Like it has to be, it has to be becoming clear to people, right? Like like, I, fast fashion is such a perfect example uh, of like th this directly hurts you as the consumer, and makes your shit worse and hurts the earth you know, and takes money out of your pocket. It, it's like, it could not be a better example of the ways that this type of late stage capitalism like is so arbitrary. So like, um, what's the word I'm looking for? It's like, it's not, it's not thought out. It's just like emergent from, from economic forces uh, that trying to suck as much out of you as it possibly can rather than made in any way to like benefit people it's like capitalist enjoyers will say that they don't like lovecraftian entities but then they support capitalism <laughs> <laughs> you know it's but it's, it's true like there's no there is no thought and like you can have people who talk about capitalist thinkers who say well it's all well planned out etc it's all being made up as they go along it, it, but it's clearly not, though. I mean, the fact that, like, we have this enormous disparity in wealth where we have, like, a handful of people with half of the money is, like, 
you can't look at that and say it's working out. It's clearly yeah. not. You know, no. like it, we, we, uh, like a tenth of the world is starving by design because we have to we have to keep them under our jackboot so that they can be our permanent slaves. You can't look at that situation and say, well, yeah, but it's working out pretty good. We got iPhones, you know. It's like yeah. I mean, I would even say with iPhones, it's working out pretty good because iPhones are pretty terrible. <laughs> and for a lot of a lot of the reasons that iPhones are terrible is because they're sold at a profit. So they're yeah. deliberately made to become obsolete within a couple of years. They're they're fused into an aluminum shell so that you can't change the battery, which is the first part you're likely going to have to replace. Instead, you have to throw the entire device out and all of the rare earth minerals that are inside that we have a limited supply of and are incredibly environmentally destructive to retrieve. You know, but it it makes Apple a few hundred dollars, you know, so fuck it, I guess. No, exactly. And it's like, it's part of the reason why, like, I don't understand people who are so into, not even necessarily, like, they come to the right conclusions, but they go about it in the weirdest way possible. Like, I have coworkers who are libertarians. I won't call them friends because, like, they're not, but I have coworkers who are libertarians who say, well, you know, you can live off the grid, you can do this if you do this, et cetera, et cetera. But, you know, it can all be done under capitalism. And I'm just thinking, mm, I mean, I can go get a generator, but I, where am I gonna get the gas from? But like, should, should the expectation be that our entire lives have to be this arduous scribble scrabble to just get by to just like have the basic necessities we should have to like be our own electricians and like you know know how to like do our own plumbing and shit like is that really how we want the world to be like is that exactly. is that the best we can do you know like when i hear capitalism breeds innovation like i know the mindset is it makes the world easier to live in but like if we have to go through all these hoops to not have to part to not have to like do any of that, is it really making the world easier to live in? Well, it it will create a problem that it then sells you the solution to. Yes. It's just like uh I don't know who said it, but they will suck the air out of the sky and then sell you oxygen in a bottle. Yeah. Like in the film The Lorax. Yes. Yep. Uh like what like ca capitalism is innovative but it's innovative on its own terms it's innovative on new ways to sucker you <laughs> yes it's, exactly you know but it's not innovative in that it it it, it invents new ideas like it, it there's there there are necessities that are only going to come about because someone can make money off of it you know in the in the in the hypothetical future where we we don't have the profit motive, people aren't going to sit around and starve to death. If something needs to get done, they're going to do it. You know exactly. You know if like people say, oh well, what capitalism breeds innovation, and you know if people didn't have that motive, profit motive, they would starve to death. It's like people didn't starve to death for the first like million years that they existed. <laughs> and and the way I think about it is like going beyond just capitalism into like the entire interlocking uh series of oppressions that that you know uh white supremacist settler colonialist cis hetero patriarchal capitalism and all of, all the other ways that like some people are held back right what if the person who was going to cure cancer didn't get to do it because they're working in a sweatshop you know like we are we are by definition eliminating huge amounts of human potential and robbing us all of like the things those people could have thought of or or innovated if they had the opportunity to do so like the only people who ever get to do to make those so-called innovations are the the small handful of people that are uh, allowed into institutions where they get the resources to do that but what if everyone could do it who knows what kind of progress we would make you know? Absolutely. And it's just, again, I, I see people coming to the right idea. If you want to, you know, quit your job, why don't you just go to school? Okay. 
sure. Why don't we make school free? <laughs> you know, if you want to quit your job, just learn a trade. Okay, why don't we make trade schools free? Why don't we make community tool sheds? You know, like this is all stuff that we could do. I mean, not under the current system, but you know, we could do this. We just need to. Well, to be clear, you could absolutely do those things under the current system. Oh yeah. You, no. could, you could absolutely have social democrat policies like free education, you know, uh, you can start a, a tool library or whatever. But the, the point is that the the underlying structure will remain the same. It will remain this exploitative thing. And there will always be this parasitic class of ghouls that any progress you make, they claw back. They 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 are constantly working to take everything from you, to keep you desperate, to keep you chained to servitude absolutely it's it's kind of in a way not funny but it's kind of in a way like you have to laugh at the absurdity of how we all collectively know the answer yet half the world more than half a good chunk of the world is like they won't say it they just refuse to say the answer. Well, it, it's funny, right? Because I think the, the biggest problem people have is they'll say it's it's simply not possible. It's simply not possible to live in a world that makes sense. We have to make do with this, with the uh, complete shit show we've created. But like, we're now entering a point where we're probably going to end life on Earth if we keep this up. <laughs> and like, it's yeah. hard to imagine a consequence worse than that. It's hard to imagine like, well, we might as well make some big swings, you know, like, like what do we have to lose at this point? Like, exactly, you know, like, sure, maybe we won't be able to live in this utopia, but we can try. Yeah. And like, if that doesn't work, you know, this isn't working. <laughs> we can't keep doing this. Exactly. This is broken, like, like fundamentally. It, 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 that should be clear to everyone by now. And I know, I know people, they know it. The, the people who defend capitalism to the teeth, they know it's not working. There, there, there is, you'll never convince me otherwise. There, there is a, uh, a type of, of person uh, on the center left, nominal center left. I don't, you know, I, I would consider them the center, but... Uh, and and the right who know that capitalism is inherently uh, irrational and unjust, but know that they are the benefactors of that irrationality and injustice, so that they 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 will prop it up on that basis because it is their belief that well, since injustice is is necessary, since there will always be a winner and a loser, I want to be the winner. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know, like. Life's not a competition, or it shouldn't be anyways. So maybe we can get rid of that mindset. And like, I know people will say, well, that's impossible. You're not going to convince everyone to do that. It's like, no, maybe not, but I can try. We can try. Like, Everything's I, impossible until it isn't, you know? Exactly. Like There was that, uh, I saw this article going around, but uh, like 10 years before the Wright brothers uh, made the first heavier than air flying machine, there was a, an article in the Times talking about how, like, it'll be 10,000 years before man learns to fly. Yeah. You know? Yeah, it's, it's, it's like, like people's imaginations are limited by what's in front of them. Exactly. And you just have to kind of, like, break out of that mindset. And I, I know people are starting to do it. Like, I have people, like I, like I mentioned earlier, like, kind of offhandedly, I'm starting a hot food program for the underprivileged in my town. That's going to start happening around spring, summer. I just got to, you know, get the final stuff taken care of so I don't get arrested. Because mm -hmm. <laughs> I want to deal with cops which as little as possible. fucking wild, by the way. Yeah. The, mm -hmm. Which is a thing that, like, everyone I've ever known that started any type of food service had to worry about, you know. Yeah. It's that like, if, you if you, of your own free will, provide food to people who are hungry, there's, you know, well, you better have the paperwork in line or else someone is going to come and arrest you for that. Yeah, and I'm just, it's mind boggling, but I'm getting all that paperwork done. And there are people who 
are like, I will volunteer with you if you do this. I will do this. I will do this. And it's like, so many people say that. And I know that they will because, you know, they're people of their word. And everyone else says, oh, it's impossible to help people like that. You know, they're just going to come back. They're going to take the food and they're going to, you know, go do, go steal. It's like, okay, but. Well, they're not going to steal food because they're not exactly. hungry anymore. Exactly. I'm covering one of their material conditions. Harm reduction, you know, stuff like that. And everyone says, oh, it's impossible. Like, I would love to do that, but it's not going to stop everything. It's like, if everyone did it. But even it, like that's such a like a well, why would I bother doing good in the world when bad things can still happen? Yeah. Like wh- 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 what? Like why would I bother getting in a pool if there's a fire next door? <laughs> yeah. Why would I why would I exercise if I'm gonna die someday? You know? Yeah, it's like it's, uh, it's like you there there you can like it's 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 self evidently a good thing to feed people who are hungry. Like it's it you don't no one expects you to be able to like end world hunger by like throwing together some sandwiches in your hometown you know and that's yeah. an absurd uh kind of hypothetical to pose well it's, oh, it's not going to fix the problem okay it'll fix the problem of this person has nothing to eat today exactly so let's start there you know and it's interesting because I got motivated to do this because I saw other people doing it. And it's just a wild concept that like people look at that and they say, well, not enough people are doing it. So why don't, why don't you join? Why don't you do your own? We have the people, we have the resources, you know, I'm doing, I'm starting in my community where I know there's a need if people get inspired and they're like, oh, two towns over, I'm going to start my own. Boom. Boom. It just, it's a, it's a, nev- it's a cycle that we can continue and that will actually benefit people. But all people have to do is just try. And the great thing about it is all these things that people complain about, theft, you know, m- like, I can't even think of like crimes right now because I'm so uh, I'm so into this thought. But like all these things that people complain about, if you just give people things to help them, it all goes away. You want people to get off drugs? You know, free rehab. You want people to stop stealing? Improve their condition. And when I say get off drugs, I mean like, you know, obviously not all... Well, you made a whole video about that, so you know. Well, I think you know it's it's tricky the the way that um, people uh, demonize drug users, but I think it's like if I were hard sleeping every night, uh, if I were you know I didn't know where my next meal was going to come from, and I had to like I didn't know when where I would be able to piss and shit because I was locked out of public restrooms because I don't have access to a restroom. You know, uh, I certainly want to, wouldn't want to do that sober. Yeah, exactly. Like everything that can be done, and I get like this one response. Well, how are you going to pay for it? It is infinitely cheaper mm. to help people than it is to fix a problem. It's like they always say, "Oh, if you want to." save on doctor bills, get preventative care, get, you know, like go regularly, then then don't go when it's just an emergency. It's like, it's the same concept. I mean, of course not everyone can go to a doctor all the time, but like, it's the same concept. You start by helping things first. You don't have a problem later. It's kind of a circular reasoning in, in a way because they set the budget based on like what they're doing. And in order to uh, get funding, they, they, they instead of like figuring out what needs to be done and finding out how to get the money for it, they say, well, this is how much we're doing now. This is what our budget is. So if we're going to do something more than that, you have to figure out where it comes from. Right. Yeah. So, but when it comes to like 
uh, extra policing or anything like that, a new stadium, suddenly the money's there, right? Oh yeah. But the 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 matter the fact of the matter is, if there is a social service that people need and they're not getting it, then you are not charging enough tax. You know? Like it's like it's simple as if if, if it, it is that is the what that that is the agreement right that is the reason that we pay taxes is the idea that the state in its in its grand design will keep us safe will use that money towards the things that we all in common require in order to be safe so if there are people that are just starving and dying on the street then it is it is to my mind. <laughs> I, it's hard for me to think of a greater threat to one's safety than that. Yeah, exactly. And if you took those people, fed them, housed them, gave them sort of some sort of job training, and they could get into the workforce, then they would pay taxes. Then you're making a net profit, you know? And I just, it's such a, like, it's mind-boggling how simple it is and how much you try to, like, explain to people and they're like, well, yeah, that sounds nice, but it will never work. It's like, it has worked. I don't this have is, exact. Sorry. This is why I call it the liberal mind prison. Because it's just thought terminating. It's just like, well, it won't work because it doesn't work. And it doesn't work because it won't work. You know, there's, there's, no, there's no logic to it. It's just like people just assume that there's some overlying principle behind everything. That there is someone rational with a big book and tiny little glasses and a big feather pen doing the balance sheet and making sure that everything's where it should be and everything makes sense. And if you disrupt too much of it, everything's going to be chaos. It's all very orderly. And like, pay no attention to the fact that, you know, within the past 10 years, like 20% of all wealth has been funneled towards the upper 0.001%. Like, that that isn't that that should show you right. Mm -hmm. You want you, any question of how are we going to pay for something? Take their shit. That's, that's it's they it, have too much shit. They do. I find it interesting too. Like I always hear the term public servants when it refers to government officials. So it's like why aren't they able to answer to us? Why is there so much bureaucracy for them to just like tell us? Hey, yeah, this is a law we're going to pass. We have to find out after they passed it. Or it's like, I, I want to say in that I'm a taxpayer. <laughs> well, this is this is the uh, the shell game of of liberal democracy, right? Where they yeah, th you you vote on a person. Uh, they give you three or four unpalatable options in your country, too. Uh, and you vote on whichever one you hate the least. And then once that person is elected, they are under no obligation to fulfill any of the things they said they were going to do. They'll just do whatever. Yeah. Like uh, uh, our, our uh, Justin Trudeau, when he, he was first elected, he ran on the idea of election reform. It was one of his more popular policies that he was going to eliminate first past the post voting. But the very second he was elected, he reversed course on that. You said, oh, Canadians don't want that. Well, how do you know that, Justin? Because it seems like Canadians elected you to do it. It's... But of course, that doesn't benefit the Liberal Party. That doesn't, the, if, if, they're, if we have a ranked choice ballot, then it removes their kind of vote for us or the Conservatives win bargaining chip that you know, keeps the other parties in line. Same here, like, oh, I, I Biden, uh... I remember Biden ran on, you know, like student debt cancellation. He ran on, he didn't ran, run exactly on universal health care, but he ran on reduced, you know, medical costs, all this stuff. And then suddenly he's like, oh no, I can't do that. I can't do that. I can't do that. It's like, people don't want that. It's like, they voted for you, idiot. <laughs> and I mean, he did, he did pull through on it, some right? promises. The, the, yeah. There is no... They they convince you that there is there is a rep, their popular representation that that you are being represented by someone who is arguing for your interests, right? But no, you're being represented by someone who said they would, <laughs> and yes, then exactly there's no repercussions. Exactly, you know? it's it's I I actually learned the term from you in a video, horizontal hierarchical structure where 
that would be like the best option. Like it's fully recallable at any moment. Mm -hmm. That would be something that like would actually give stakes to elections. Because yeah, oh, it would force politicians to like maintain a certain level of popularity and to do things that people actually want. Yeah, because I mean, there was there was a recall election in California, but it's such a long drawn out process that it's like who who gives a shit at the end of it? Well, whoever wins, we all lose. But in you know, if it were immediate, if it's like no, the people decided you're out. Fuck, I got to do my job. <laughs> I got to pass some damn laws. It's also funny that uh, conservatives will argue whenever a liberal politician does anything which benefits people or does anything which is popular, that they're buying votes by doing it. It's And it just speaks to the authoritarian mindset of, of your average conservative, where it's like, well, your job isn't to to do what people tell you to do. That's not democratic. Your job is to do the correct thing as decided by me. You know? Exactly. I, it's hilarious. How dare you buy votes by following your policy plan? Yeah. I, I said this before, and like, I'm not I'm not defending any Democrat, any anyone, but like at least when there are politicians who try to do their job the way that they were, you know, the way they said they were going to do it. The fact that there's so much pushback against it, even from people within their own party, even the people who voted for, not people who voted for them, but the people in their own party shows that it's all a fucking joke. It's all a puppet show. And, you know, coming back to this idea that it's impossible, right? They'll yeah. say that about healthcare in the United States that it's impossible for the United States to have healthcare. It's like literally every other developed nation on earth, you know, like, no, it, it's, it's eminently possible. It's actually cheaper. It, you know, if you were on the other side of it, you would say that the private healthcare system you have in the United States now is impossible and you'd be yeah. more correct. You know, it's, it's like, a, this, this, uh, there's this tendency, I, I call it the liberal death drive what, to, preemptively capitulate to your opponents on the grounds that you'll never look foolish by losing a fight, you know, to just yeah. constantly go like, Oh, you can't, you can't get that. So don't bother advocating for it. You have to be sensible here. You have to compromise as much as you possibly can so that what you're asking for becomes so diluted, so meaningless that, you know, it, it, it really doesn't even matter if you get it or not. And then you, fight on this wishy-washy bullshit that nobody cares about and lose. And then you use that as further excuse to, to go even more to the center. You know, it's, it's yeah. And like, I guess like part of it too is like, you can make anything sound convincing if you don't try to do it. I, I hear people all the time say like, oh, well, historically, Communism has never worked. Well, why hasn't communism worked? And and what does worked mean? Yeah, exactly. Like, like where are the economy points that I'm I'm not seeing? You know, like what? How do you determine whether or not an economy works or not? Like, what does that mean? Yeah, like oh, people starved in communism. People starve in capitalism. The only difference is the reason communists starved was because they were cut off from the world. <laughs> They were literally being like, and I mean, granted, I'm not going to put every communist dictator or leader on a pedestal here. There are some bad, there are some bad people who do, you know, who say they're going to do good shit, but that's not the point. The point is like the embargo on Cuba. Let's look at Cuba. Oh, Cubans are starving. How many years was there a trade embargo on Cuba? I, I think there still is. I'm not sure if there is or not, but like. Yeah, it certainly doesn't help them not starve. You yeah. Know? I just, I see it all the time and it's, well, yeah, if you actively decide to oppose something, it's going to seem like it doesn't work. Yeah. If all of the most powerful countries on earth conspire to destroy uh, a, a poor country because they don't want its ideology to spread, then yeah, it's going to have a harder time uh, flourishing on the global stage. Yeah. So, I mean, it's, 
sticking with like that, it's just interesting when people say things don't work because they haven't been tried or they're actively oppressed. Like food programs, the fact I have to jump through so many hurdles to make sure I don't get arrested for serving pre-made pizza, not even stuff I'm making out of my own, you know, house. Pre-made pizza, I have to jump through so many hurdles to do this. That's a problem. If I were to bring those pizzas to work and give them to my coworkers for free, there wouldn't be a problem. I wouldn't have to have a permit for that. But to do it, you know, outside, give it to a homeless person, oh, you know, that's a thousand dollar fine. It's yeah, it's just it's clown world. It doesn't it just doesn't make any sense. It's just yeah. All right, and so now, now that we've now that we've thoroughly uh, thoroughly ripped capitalism a new one, like that's a surprise on any of these leftist mm -hmm. streams. I wanted to finally go into the one topic that really interested me, and it was kind of how it's something that I know that you've seen when you started taking on Caleb Maupin and this, you know, the CPI. Mm -hmm. I wanted to know, like, this wave of conservative conservative communism and, like, so patriotic socialism, like, as far as what you've seen, like, why do you think, A, why it was ever picking up steam, and B, how, like, when one person falls, it seems like the whole movement is pretty much at a standstill now? It, well... Sadly not, but uh, oh, yeah. uh, th the fact of the matter is they're not communists. Uh, they, yeah. they, it, it, like they're, Caleb Maupin himself uh, has advocated for like more industrial capital. Like he's he stated that as one of the pillars of his beliefs in a tweet recently. So it's like, like I mean, you, you're yeah. literally arguing for the private control of the means of production. I don't know how you could consider yourself a communist in any sense other than you like like to wear red flags with hammers and sickles on them and that it's it's an aesthetic thing right so much of the the online left is committed to this kind of useless uh aesthetics of like rebellion and uh um as though you are sticking it to the man by posting uh yeah. that that it's inevitable that if that is the mindset, if if your goal is to think of yourself as this iconoclast who is bucking the system, then whoever claims to buck the system harder will just come along. And if it doesn't matter if their ideas are consistent. In fact, the fact that their ideas are inconsistent is a benefit to people like that because it allows them to pick like a more niche thing that might not make any sense, but allows them to get in more arguments and play the devil's advocate more and act like they're more of a, more of a radical because they, you know, they don't buy into your shit, man. Uh, so it's, it's this pure, uh, pure idealism in, yeah. in my mind. It's just interesting because I've seen like people defend transphobia in these like quote unquote communist circles. And I'm just thinking to myself, like one of the arguments was used, it's like, oh, well, you're not thinking dialectically about it. What the fuck does that even mean? <laughs> I'm not interested in even interrogating it, to be honest. Yeah. Because like, the, the, it, um, there's, a, there's an outstanding problem, I think, uh, among, um, the, the left in general, uh, but more specifically, uh, white male leftists, uh, which is that they're perfectly comfortable talking about how capitalism is hurting people, because that's a problem which affects them. But the yes. minute you reflect on the fact that the, some people are hurt more by capitalism, and that there is a, a, an interlocking system of oppression, which they are the benefactors of suddenly you're going too far suddenly you, you, we have to pull back and like really look at what we're saying here because oh, i'm getting scared that maybe you're going to come for me you know it, it's uh th this is why I, I i think it's almost like i i tend to get uh, a little frustrated when when people just want to talk about capitalism 
yeah. it's like kind of a warning sign for me that like this person is not to be trusted, you know? Exactly. Like, it, like settler colonialism, imperialism, these things are maintain capitals and these things, uh, they're, they're self-reinforcing structures. You cannot, cannot, cannot get rid of one without getting rid of the other. You simply can't. And oh. so the idea that we should simply focus on capitalism and ignore like the, the racial disparity, ignore the gender disparity, ignore, uh, you know, cis heteropatriarchy, ignore settler colonialism. It, it's, it's tilting at windmills. It's, it's, it's trying to keep your spot. It's trying to get rid of all of the inequalities which affect you, but stay top dog, you know? Yeah. It's just, it's a hierarchy with more steps in my opinion. Like, I just find it interesting. Like it's such a thing, like people who say they're communists, they're like, well, the working class doesn't care about that. The working class didn't care about a lot of things before it was brought to attention. Racial disparities, working class are like, well, I just want to get, you know, I just want to get my job done and go home. It's like, well, this is how, you know, racism affects you. And if you notice a lot more working class people these days, are less racist than they were 50, 60, 70 years ago. There's a reason for that. <laughs> well, I, th there's this uh, construction of a, of a certain um, working class iconography by these people where they imagine that the working class is like this 1950s nuclear family guy with a big hammer working in a factory. You know? Yeah. Some salt of the earth Archie Bunker type who uh, might not have all the right of your politically correct opinions, but you know, he works an honest day's living. And it's like, there are guys like that in the world. Sure. The entirety of the working class is composed of like a much richer tableau than that. Like for you to say that, that, uh, the working class, not you to say, but the general yeah. you, uh, for someone to say that the working class doesn't care about say feminist issues, you're implicitly conceding that you think of only men as the working class, right? Exactly. Because half of the working class are women. And I think women kind of care about that a lot, actually. <laughs> kind of care about getting their shit, you know, too. And exactly. If, and if they didn't, uh, if, if the working class, by and large, didn't believe in li the liberation of the working class, would you feel that it was appropriate to let that stand, to not exactly. try to change their mind, <laughs> you know, like it's. People don't care about things until you make them care. It's that simple. Like when I was growing up, I never, I never like was told about, you know, what's happening to gay people, what's happening to like African-Americans, what's happening to other people. I was just, you know, in my own bubble. And as I got older and like social media became a thing, I started to see, holy shit, there's so much more out there than what I've experienced in my little hamster ball. And at first I was sheltered. I'm like, yeah, you know, that's bad for them, but what am I going to do? And that attitude, you know, it ended up evolving into, wow, I can make tangible changes because I have the ability to make someone care about this. And I mean, none of us are perfect. We all still learn. And that's the point of this. It's not to be perfect. Like I've said some things in my past videos that I would fully take back now if I could, if I can go back there and re-record them, I would, but I've evolved from that point. And we've all evolved from a certain point. It's a matter of the working class may not care about gender ideology right now, but as more and more people who are trans, who are non-binary, who are gender non-conforming enter the workforce, eventually it's going to become something they have to deal with. And it's going to be something that they're going to have to acknowledge. But also it is worth acknowledging that like that is just an assumption they've made based on their own bigotries. 
Oh, is the, the, the paternalistic attitude that a lot of these people have towards the working class is that they must be these uh, uh, ignorant dummies who couldn't possibly grasp an idea like a gender expression or gender nonconformity. You know, they're, they're oh, they're simple folk that, that can't uh, grapple with that. They simply want uh, to get more hamburger and to uh, drink more beer and watch more sport and go to sleep. You know, this is this is what the simple folk want. Um, well, like I, I have, I have more faith in the working class than that, you know. Like I, I think that it's, it's just people who are capable of knowing all the same things I know, of thinking all the same things I think. You know, if I can learn it, then I just believe anyone can learn it. I don't think that like it's all that difficult, and it's just it's frustrating. But like in terms of the numbers, do the working class support uh, trans people? Uh, overwhelmingly, yes. Overwhelmingly, yeah. they do. And if you look at the, where the the lack of support comes from, uh, where the where the detractors come from, it is upper middle class people. It is mm -hmm. it is not like the the salt of the earth guy with a hammer that uh, Pat Sox would like to pretend it is. And it's in, and it's like it's interesting because they're not even like that fully educated in like all this stuff that like happens. They're not educated in queer theory or anything like that. They just know, hey, this is the person who works next to me. This is the person trying to survive. <laughs> I, I feel like that's 90% of knowledge right there. If you just know, hey, someone else is trying to survive with me, I want them to have a job as much as I have a job. They're not going to care about whether or not, you know, some it guy is. on Twitter who has read Lenin thinks it's dialectically inconsistent to support no because it's absolute baby brain shit to care about it, it yeah. you have to be such a, a a complete and utter dipshit to care like the idea that you're going to meet somebody and even if in in your heart of hearts you don't believe trans people are valid like to just like go like all right i'll call you a different name you know okay like yeah. Why would you take it home with you? Why would you take that bitterness home with you unless you're just this extremely small-minded person who obsesses over shit that does not matter? You know, that you have no skin in the game. Like, who cares? Exactly. Uh, for me, you like, let's, let's, let's take a little less stakes. I get yelled at all the time at my job. When I go home, I don't give a shit. When I go home, it's like, those people might have had a bad day or maybe they're just assholes. I'll probably never see most of them again. Why should I care? Why should I care about any of it? What I care about is like my big thing that I do take home with me is what can I do to help someone? Mm -hmm. Even if it's marginally. When I go on Twitter and argue, I don't get rewarded from that. When I go out and I help someone and someone's day is a little bit better, coworker, friend, family, you know, even just someone who, you know, is having a hard time. And I just say like, Hey, you know, are you doing okay? And they feel a little bit better from that. That's what, that's what comes home with me. That's what I care about. I just, I just feel that we on the left don't do a necessarily a good enough job of pointing out that it's actually the bigots who are losers and uh, complete freak shows like yeah. that is it's such like a complete bonkers way to live and to be that like what the fuck is wrong with you just cut it out you know exactly and that's you know going back to earlier that's why things like the cringe corner are important because you got to point out yeah call out videos call out videos in general don't always help but when you do it in a way that shows how ridiculous it is not just with science, because people who are anti, you know, people who are part of their followers, they don't care about the science. They will argue against science. They will argue against statistics till they're blue in the face. Yeah. If, if science were going to change their mind, it would have done so already. But, but the, the, I would argue it can't even be, it can't even come from a place of, of morality, you know, because they don't care. They don't yeah. care that they're hurting people. If they did, they wouldn't do the things that they're doing. It has to come from a place of, look what a fucking dipshit this person is. Mm -hmm. Let's all point and laugh at like what a little baby loser this person is that they're so mad that someone else wore a dress. Like 
get the fuck over it. Like, how do you not have any real problems in your life? And th it, it robs them of the sense of underlying strength that they, they like to position themselves as the silent majority that everyone yeah. has really agrees with them. And when you point at them and, and go like, look at this, look at this guy, get a load of this guy. It, it shatters that. And that's, Absolutely. that's why they lose their mind at, about it. That's why they like, cannot, they, they can deal with you calling them uh, evil or monsters. They cannot deal with you laughing at them. No, I think, and I know like, this isn't going to be the most, you know, like world changing thing, but I had a friend who was a supporter of Ben Shapiro. Didn't like the fact he was anti-trans, but he said like, oh, Ben Shapiro is so smart. I showed him that one H-Bomber guy clip. Mm, with know. the, where are they going to- Who are they going to sell, sell it to? Ben? Fucking Aquaman? Aquaman? Yeah. Instantly. Like, it's not going to work for everyone, but instantly that guy's like, oh my God, Ben Shapiro's an idiot. Yeah. That's all it takes sometimes is just to, just to shatter that illusion, right? Yeah. And they're, it's also like the, the, the writer's so self-serious. They have they absolutely are. no sense of humor about themselves. It, it, it's like they, they need to think of themselves as these big, strong, toughy, big brain boys. And if you, you know, if you, it, it, thus they are, they are never equipped to deal with someone finding a successful way to make fun of them, you know? Yeah. Like Jordan Peterson and Kermit the Frog. Yeah. Ever since that comparison was made, He's just fucking so mad about it. Or just like the lobster thing, how people, yeah. you know, keep bringing up lobsters to him and he tried to roll with the punches and he like does photo shoots where he holds up plastic lobsters. And it's, it's like, all I can think of is that drill tweet where it's like, and another <laughs> thing, I'm not mad. Don't put in the newspaper that I got mad. You know, <laughs> just you, 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 they have, they have to accept, like, we have to accept that. To a point, call out videos are important. Not, you know, that is your only form of practice. No. Because most of the time, after a while, you're kind of like, okay, you're just spouting off facts. Posting, posting should be no one's only form of praxis. Yes. <laughs> you know? But every now and then, you know, like pointing out how ridiculous someone looks, that's enough. That is why right. like, I would go even further. Sometimes like it, it doesn't need, uh, I like, I don't posting is not revolutionary. The revolution will not be live streamed. The, the, yeah. the, the fact of the matter is it's enough if it's just a funny video. Yeah. Like I don't, it doesn't need to be praxis, but, uh, I, I do think it is necessary to like deflate these people. Mm -hmm. I don't think it's the most necessary thing, but you know, well, and like, I guess it's kind of like one of those things where you get a one-two punch. You have one person coming in saying, hey, Jordan Peterson sounds like Kermit the Frog. And then people like, oh, ha ha, he does. That's kind of funny. It takes away that little bit of mystique. And then another person comes in like, scientifically, this is why he's wrong. They're more open to receiving that information now that you were able to take down that veneer. Yes. Yeah. And I think like, those videos that like have both that have like you instantly go after something that makes them look ridiculous and then point out why they're wrong are more impactful than just one or the other. Cause I can make Prager you take down videos all day, but if I'm just sitting there spouting off facts, no one who watches Prager you cares. No, you've got to point out how they're little losers who are constantly pissing and shitting in their diapers. Like yeah. It's, it's the only way to approach them. Cause like the, the, the facts don't matter. The, like the, the, it's so Prager U is, is like any, any random Prager U video, you try it at home, everyone uh, look at the sources on their videos and see how many of their sources actively contradict what they are saying. It is it, like, they will, they will quote an article that is literally written to dispute the narrative that they're pushing as fact as a source. And they do it all the time. Like to the point that it, it, it gets repetitive, pointing it out. It gets boring. They just overwhelm you with lies so that you just debunking it is, you know, you can always make up bullshit faster than you can debunk shit. Like it's, you know, that that's, if you're completely unscrupulous as the people at Prager you are, you that's something you can do, which is why you have to also uh, point out 
that they're embarrassing weirdo freaks. <laughs> you exactly. Know? Exactly. It's it's so fucking funny. Um oh god, what was it? I'm trying to remember that there's this one Prager U video that someone pointed out that literally every single source they had said the opposite. And like you said, and I'm just thinking, God, if I were to turn that into a drinking game, I'd be dead in one 10 minute video with how like wrong they interpreted the data. Because holy shit, it's like they cited like 10, 15 sources and every single one of them came to the exact opposite conclusion of the video. I gotta look it up because it's 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 not even that unusual. That like uh, they did the same thing that uh, they did a video about like uh, uh, how to de how to deal with the homeless problem. Uh, yeah. That and I I did a rebuttal to that and it was the same thing. All of the all of their sources com completely contradicted the what they were the 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 narrative they were trying to apply to them. It's 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 it, it's not hard. It, that's that's the thing, right? It's that should be your your warning <laughs> that yeah it doesn't really matter right like the reason people listen to prager you isn't because they they're swayed by the uh wealth of evidence it's because they 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 feel like they're winning you know it's the vibe yeah it's, it's vibes vibe. you have to like challenge the vibes yeah and uh Going back a little bit, because like I've just been like thinking about it. Because you know, I have to get my bread tube checked somehow. So we got to mm -hmm. talk about Caleb Moppin and bring him down a little bit more. Yeah, 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 yeah. The CIA doesn't pay me to to sit around and talk anti-capitalism all day. They want me to take out the true revolutionaries out there. So yes, exactly. Yeah, yeah. I will say, like, I don't I I I didn't follow Caleb Mop until after you made that first video about him. Mm -hmm. And like, I watched some of his like older, older videos, like before then about like just teaching communist concepts. And I'm just thinking, how did this guy go from being like someone who just like seemed like he had a grasp of what he was reading to just the complete opposite? Because his video on dialectical materialism was the one video that like explained everything in layman's terms. Mm -hmm. To a point where I'm like, okay, now I get it. Instead of using contradiction, contradiction to explain what a contradiction is, he's like, this is not this, even though they look the same. And it's like, wow, that was like the first person to do it. And then like, he goes from that to being like, well, Russia is our communist, you know, Putin is our communist leader and we should all listen to him. Well, I don't know if he's ever... <laughs> gone that far like, well, like he's, he's, like he's pro-russia i don't know if he's ever yeah but uh it, you, the thing you have to keep in mind right is that he he is well versed in marxist theory um but he do, he doesn't agree with it like he he is uh uh um, so much of the worldview that he espouses is directly from the larouche movement right which is yeah. an anti-marxist organization that they, they uh that that has collaborated with U.S. intelligence to like get Marxists arrested. Like, it, um, it is it is the oldest trick in the book. So like, not everything Caleb Maupin says is wrong, and that that like I think it would one of the one of the ways that you can tell he's a dishonest person is that he can never concede when his enemy makes a good point. He can never say you made a good point, but you're using it to justify something bad. It's always some imaginary like cartoonish caricature of what another person believes right the thing is caleb Maupin will will start from a basic set of premises that are true and then extrapolate something that doesn't follow and then if you attempt to dispute the the part that's untrue he'll start arguing the part that's true as though you're disputing that so he'll say like you know um he'll talk about the the United States uh, maintains uh, poverty on on the global South in order to uh, keep people desperate enough to work for cheap and so they can continue to extract resources from them, and therefore uh, we should all support uh, <laughs> Bashir al-Assad. 
And then you'll go, yeah. whoa, 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 and I don't, Assad, what are you talking about? He goes, look at this guy, he thinks imperialism is good. And the, this, yeah. is the, this is the trick he pulls over and over and over, is anytime he is challenged on a legitimately controversial point, he backs away and pretends that they're talking about something that's not controversial. Yeah. So that he never has to defend any of his actually batshit positions. It, it's like, and his followers are exactly the same. I one time pointed out like, he said something about like how supporting Russia was anti-imperialism. I pointed out, well, Russia is doing an imperialism. And his followers were like, oh, so you support the US hegemony. I'm like, no. <laughs> that's, that's, the... that's, that, that's it. That's exactly it, right? It's like a, a, by not, uh, the, because it's big in LaRouche circles that there has to be this uh, multipolarity where there has to be more than one global superpower in order to maintain balance, you know, therefore, if you are not in favor of Russian imperialism, you are de facto in favor of United States imperialism, you know? I'm just, it's just like, it. I think it's the first time, like, it's not the first time I've dealt with circular logic, but the first time I dealt with something so utterly bizarre that I'm just, I had to like get off Twitter. I was like, you know what? No, I'm not so continuing this, like, this conversation. That... It's, it's like, I've just gotten used to whenever I criticize him, he will retort with just some patently false bullshit. Like he'll just claim I believe something with based on no evidence and then like send his sycophants out to like just reply to every tweet I make, like saying, why do you believe this? You know, like the, uh, uh, like th now they're, they're claiming that uh, uh, I'm in favor of eugenics. Because I said that uh, the, the, the infinite growth under capitalism uh, is not maintainable, which is quite literally like the, 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 the most milk toast statement uh, I feel a communist could make, right? It is. And it's, it's not even like. There, there about... are limited resources on earth, you know? <laughs> so yeah. we cannot keep expecting an infinite return, an infinitely escalating return. At some point, there's we have to level off, right? But then they take that to mean through some like bullshit leaps in logic where th if they could just establish a thread that like, you know, th of, of like, maybe this, maybe that, uh, th they'll go, oh, so you're saying that we shouldn't try to have more food so that people in the global South can eat. You think that only white people should get to eat. You're trying to do some sort of white supremacist eugenics program. Is that what you're saying to me? And it's and like, it no, it isn't. <laughs> what I'm trying to say to you are the things that I said. Yes, it's a, uh... Like that one tweet. Uh, I like waffles. Oh, so you hate pancakes? Yeah, 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 yeah. It's like, but that's all whole... it is. That's all. That's <laughs> all. That's the only trick he has, and he is continuously baffled by the fact that he goes to these absurd lengths to paint his enemies as as ghouls, uh, as as uh, as as secret monsters, you know. Uh, and all I have to do is mentioned that he said burger funny one time and people laugh at him and that 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 and like he'll like he he for a while tried to get the nickname skippy the bear going for me and it's like like it's it's like but you're not you have if you're gonna make fun of me caleb it's not hard to make fun of me i make fun of me all the time it's i'm a profoundly easy to make fun of person you have to it has to be something about me <laughs> like you know like, it's just it's completely unrelated it's just like tie it to something that's funny about me you I know rem i remember that response too where he's like claimed you weren't a real working class person because you said burger king yeah and then he oh, went yeah. off to say like in a video about it was like that wasn't that video but it was like a video similar where you just recently talked about how many jobs you've had or the worst jobs you've had. And then he goes and he says like, I'm part of the working class because I worked a summer at a coffee shop. Yeah. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> okay, Caleb. Sure. Yeah. It's, it's, it's uh, like, he's, he's, he's not a serious person. No. He, he's, it's just like, yeah. And like, I gotta, I gotta say this. I know that the V-man isn't necessarily liked here, but 
I remember one time he was talking about something and he mentioned how, uh, oh, well, I'm not expecting, you know, the international out of this, but he wants some sort of like, get, he wants something to happen with a, a socialist revolution. And Caleb went like, see, this is where Vosh is wrong because the international is a song. It's like, <laughs> you know what he meant. <laughs> the surfs covered it. And I'm just like, oh my God. That's the worst well, you know, logic you could have taken. There's the uh, I would argue that uh, Vosh's uh, liberalism leaves the door open for guys like Caleb Maupin to absolutely uh, appear to attack him from the left. Uh, like, uh, oh, what was the? He had some absolutely dog shit definition of fascism. Yeah, that that was just like. He was, it was in a debate with Caleb Maupin where he was trying to argue that China is fascist. And his, his logic was like, because uh, I, I don't even remember what it was, but uh, Caleb retorted with a better definition of fascism. That was still wrong. Yeah. But uh, it's, it's like, it's that type of aesthetic leftism that I think like leaves the door open where, where now the Caleb Maupins of the world can come in and go, well, you don't have to, you know, if you want to make a true difference in the world, we're we're the serious people who wear suits and uh, meet up in in uh, conference rooms and wave flags, and we're fighting for the real working class. You know, it's a uh, yeah. I just I found it like interesting how, and I see it in all of those types. Like I see it in Peter Coffin with his. Hitler eyebrows comment about Sophie with their Hitler eyebrow comment about Sophie. I don't want to be mm. disrespectful, even though I don't like Coffin. Um, I see it in like, there's one person who goes by Space LaRouche on Twitter who, who called American Johnson Luna for some reason. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm just like, you, you, like you, they're like Jackson Hinkle. Uh, going off about how like women these days can't cook. It's like, shut up, you, you fucking dork. Yeah. Like, like <laughs> shut, shut up. Like, like, there's, like no there's no, there's no responding to it. There's no substance to it. It is just like fucking losers doing like 2016 ass fortune and bullshit trying to like get a rise out of you. It, it It's just like the most pathetic, unserious people. Like, yeah, I just, I can't like, in my head, when I think about that, I'm like, okay, there's gotta be some way, there's, there gotta be like a 40 chess move they're doing. And it's not, it's like, it's like exposing your queen and then knocking your king off the board yourself with these people. Yeah, no, they're they just they're they're, they're fundamentally doofuses. Like it, it like yeah. there's there's just there's nothing to them. It, it, it's it's almost hard to not to watch them and assume that there's got to be something more to this because no one could be this dumb. But yeah, it turns out someone can. Oh yeah, yeah, a, a lot of them, a lot of them are. And I see like the fact that I see people who don't have nearly as much, when I say education, I don't necessarily mean they're not educated, but they don't have as much book smarts about Marxism or anything like that, just completely destroy them on communism. That's when I'm just like, no, there's, there's no way that this person almost started like a movement. Cause like they, they did, they almost got like a pretty significant, I mean, they were, really like advocating to President Trump to open up talks with Russia, the CPI. And I'm just like, the fact that no, like- No, they weren't. No, they, they weren't. They said they were, but like the fact that like, they were like, even like doing that. The CPI was never not going to go exactly the way that it went, right? I mean, fair. It, it, it is the, built into its structure is it is a vanity project for Caleb. Like when he stepped down as like the official head of it, he- made himself the ideological leader built into the constitution. It is like, 
Therefore, anytime he has some, some sort of public fall from grace, anytime he has some sort of split uh, with someone else, any other major figure in the movement, it's going to cause that fracture because it, it, it's not resilient. It's not based yeah. on like principles. It's not based on any sort of solidarity. It's based on him getting personal power. So like it, it is like that, that like luckily, <laughs> luckily yeah. he'll never be skilled enough to do that. Yeah, no, you are right. And like, I just, I think it's in its own right. It's kind of like what we were talking about earlier that the fact we're able to continuously over and over point this out about how just much of a clown Caleb is and how much of a clown his followers are. It's important, but it's also important to like not repeat what they're doing. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Because I see I see some some people on the left who try to repeat they, they may not be like hat socks or anything, but they're trying to repeat that same sort of like deal. And it's like, no, you, you can't be kind Caleb Moppin. You have to be someone different. Well, it, it and, there, and I mean that's honestly why I've kind of changed the focus like i don't talk as much about uh strictly speaking uh leftism and and anti-capitalist talking points because i feel that a lot of people were internalizing a certain white victimhood from it yeah that made me deeply uncomfortable where they were as i said they were they were willing to go to it so far as uh they were uh the the wronged party and anything beyond yeah. that was, uh, they were not interested in hearing. And I, 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 I simply have no interest in perpetuating that. And I, I honestly have to say, like, first off, not to, not to be like a fan boy, not be like a fan here, but like, your videos have gone a lot better. I love Thank them. You. They were always good, but they have gotten a lot better. But also, the fact that not only have they gotten better, but you can still weave political points in there without making it like the hard focus of the video shows that we don't need to like turn everything into a serious lecture. Yeah. You can, you can still have good points. You can still educate people without making it into a whole boring two hour, you know, socialist research paper. All right. Well, I think that wraps it up for today. Is there any closing thoughts for you? I've never had a thought in my life and I don't intend to start now. That, that's fair. I like it. All right. Well, thank you so much for coming on. Um, obviously, Thought Slime and Scaredy Cats are the channels. Anything else you want to promote? The Check me out on uh, weekends, twitch.tv or youtube.com slash Thought Slime, uh, usually around three o'clock on weekend days. I do a little stream where I draw a little comic book. And uh, yeah, you'll have a good time. Absolutely. And you can find us on Spotify, all, all the places where you listen to podcasts. And I will be posting this video on YouTube. And excellent. Once again, thank you. I hope you have a wonderful day and a wonderful holiday week, whatever you decide to do. You as well. Thank you so Thanks much. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. It's always, a, it's always a pleasure. Not first time we've done it, but always a pleasure anyways. <laughs> And to everyone watching, have a good night.